What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 10 and we start as days of stuff by officially changing the position of Serge Aurier. You would have seen he's been starting through the middle of the park for us in our 5-3-2 due to the injury crisis we've got through the middle of the park. Yates had been down, he's now coming back to training. Colback, uh, Mangala and of course Freud with that broken toe as well. So Serge changing to a holding mid. He's now 30 years old, the Ivorian. He came to the start of the season on the freebie from Villarreal. And, you know, I don't, I'm definitely not against extending his contract. You know, he's not had that many minutes this season. When he has played, he's been pretty solid. And again, I like him playing holding mid. He can play right back. Well, right back is his main position, but he can play holding mid. And, I mean, even though he's not the tallest of lads, I think he could possibly fill in as a right-sided centre-half in a back five as well. But Serge now changing to holding mid, and maybe, just maybe, in the twilight of his career, that will be the position he change he needs to take the next step. Anyway, first game of today's episode, heading into this one. Brighton and Hove Albion at the City Ground. Coming on the back of that 1-1 draw to Chelsea in the Carabao Cup semi-final second eight, of course, saw our progress end at the final four 3-1 over two legs. Gutted about exiting the competition at the final four. We had the chances. Brennan missed a sitter in that game. But he set up the first in this one on the weekend to make amends. Yeah, lovely quick breakaway here as we fed the ball into Johnson. And what a duo these guys have been this season. Both now in double digits. Brennan and Tywo combining for our first of the game. And we take the lead over the Zabi side. So 1-0 Nottingham Forest. And we had the lead at the break, but it did not last long. Yep, seven minutes after the restart. And Becker put the Zabi side back on level terms. Brighton know about battling back and claiming points away from home. They are on their way to getting one here. What a result they had against Liverpool on Saturday, of course, and that epic thriller at Anfield. So, yeah, Geraldo Becker scoring the level. It's 1-1, but our Achilles heel on full display, as was this. Oh, what a goal from Mangala back in the team after his slight knock and back with a bang, quite literally. You would have seen I went with a timed shot. And some of you guys have asked me, why do you never do that? Why do you never use the time shot feature that got added into the game a couple of years ago? The fact of the matter is, normally I get it horribly, horribly wrong. And of course, if you get it wrong, you will never score. I very, very rarely do a time shot. Very rarely. But it just sat up so nicely. I thought, you know what? I'll give it a go there. And Mangala belted in the goal to restore our lead. But the problems laid bare at the city ground once again. Becker leveled it 12 minutes after we restored our lead in a 2 2 draw, which probably was the right result in fairness. So another game which we failed to win, another game where we concede multiple, and another game where we failed to hold on to a lead. Yep, 14 games to go in the season now, and the problems remain for Nottingham Forest. Just cannot keep the ball out of the back of our own net. So as deadline day came by, I thought, right, we've got just under £14 million in our transfer budget. At the start of the window, I didn't really have any plans to do anything. If Raynan Lodi was still here, I probably would have done anyway. But instead, we put Omar Richards on the loan list. Unfortunately, haven't really had the right offers coming in for him for realism and also a, real, a destination I want to uh, loan him out to as well. But we finally got one for him, about four hours left to go. By Leverkusen, uh, putting in a loan offer for Omar Richards. And I quite like that as well. You know, Leverkusen have struggled a bit to start the season off in the Bundesliga this year, of course, as we know. Uh, Omar Richards, of course, came in from Bayern Munich, so obviously spent a little bit of time playing in the Bundesliga as well. So that was relatively realistic there, going to a Bundesliga side. He spent time in Germany at Bayern Munich and with Bayer Leverkusen struggling a little bit to start the season off. Well, that was quite realistic there, to be fair. So we loaned him out to Bayer Leverkusen on a short-term loan deal, meaning he'll come back uh, towards the end of the season, be back for next year as well. Obviously, Rodri Brown is our starting left-back, and whilst Reynan Lodi was recalled by Diego Simeone, We've got Harry Toffolo as well. So we've got three left-backs here. If we need to do so, I'm sure Nia Kate could slide in on the left-hand side. Jack Colback and Lewis O'Brien have spent time playing left wing-back. We've got so much depth in that area, so I'm totally fine loading out a good young talent there to get more first-team football. Great thing we'll get more first-team football at Leverkusen than he would here at the city ground, but that is the situation we're in right now. So as deadline there was coming to its end, I did decide to make one signing in this January transfer window, and I thought, right, 
We like versatility here at Forest. We've got a lot of players who can play in multiple positions. And I found this guy through my scouting. And I quite like the look of him as well. Now, I don't know anything about him. So I might need some help from my African football fans and my Ligue 1 football fans as well. But... This guy looks pretty solid. Marshall Minetzi. He's a 26-year-old Zimbabwean holding mid playing for Stad Rehm. We got him for a 3.25 mil pound deal plus Czech Koyate, which I really like as well because Koyate did submit a transfer request, which of course we agreed to because he hasn't played much this season. No bids have come in, but he can go to France. He's Senegalese, so of course he speaks French. He'll go to Stad Rehm and will pick up Marshall Minetzi on a five-year deal, £35,000 a week. It's quite a light for like swap that and I really like the look of this guy as well now he's six foot two he's strong not the best jumping stat but he definitely looks like someone that could fill in as a ball playing defender in a back five possibly even at right wing back and especially as a good solid holding mid I think that's where we get the best out of him again 26 years old six foot two again very strong great stamina a good passer of the ball the leadership trait as well and a freestyle weak foot as well not the quickest not the greatest jump on him but again bags of energy really really strong decent passer and really good tackling stats as well so to me he looks like quite a like for like replacement with Czech Koyate so yeah we do get our new Zimbabwean in and you know it's, it's quite interesting because you know the World Cup coming in Qatar very very soon and, uh, you know, I don't let you guys into my uh, romantic life, uh, let you guys know about my romantic uh, life very often. But uh, a couple of months ago, I split up with my partner and uh, they were Kenyan and um, <laughs> they know I love football. So to, to engage in conversations when we first started dating, they, they used to ask me, you know, how, how good a Kenya at football? And I said, well, you know, I've had some decent players over the years. I said Victor Wanyama, you know, spent many, many years at Celtic, Southampton and, and Spurs playing at a high level. Really good player, sadly was injury plagued and uh, they said if Kenya ever won the World Cup and uh, I said you know I don't know if Kenya have even been in the World Cup before to be honest they certainly never won it and uh, and then they asked has an African team ever won the World Cup and I said unfortunately not and they said oh and uh, I said but they have had a few countries reach the quarterfinals that's the best finish they've had if never had an African nation get to the semi-finals of the World Cup but uh, a few have, of course, reached the quarterfinals uh, over the years. And then I said, but I actually think there's a genuine chance in this year's Qatar World Cup that we could see an African team reach the semi-finals of the World Cup. And I definitely believe that an African team is going to reach the quarterfinals of the World Cup this year. I definitely believe that. And if I was going to stick my neck out and say what nation I think it will be, I think Senegal have got a golden chance to get into the World Cup quarterfinals. They're in Group A, of course, the favour Group A with uh, Qatar, the host as well. Um, I, of course, won the African Cup of Nations earlier this year. they got some incredible players, obviously Mendy between the six for Chelsea, struggled a little bit this season, but even so, Kuli Bali, Sadio Mane and so on and so forth. Forth. I think there's a great chance this year an African team could make history and reach the semi-finals of the World Cup. I, I said to uh, my, my, my ex-partner, I think this might be the year we finally see an African team reach the final four. It never happened in World Cup history. The best, as we know, have been a few quarter-final places. This year, I think a team could get to the semi-finals of the World Cup. I definitely think at least one of the five nations will reach the quarter-finals. I'm very excited for the future of African football. And yeah, I think there's a genuine chance we could see a country make history in this Qatar World Cup and reach the semi-final. And speaking of African play as well, for the second game, on today's episode on the back of the draw with Brighton. What about this for a saviour? First goal in the Premier League this season for Emmanuel Dennis. Came off the bench at Goodison Park and levelled it with the final kick of the game. Danilo Pereira gave the Toffees the opener. And with again the final kick of the match. Emmanuel Dennis in from Watford, the Nigerian striker. All of his goals this year, he scored five goals, all came in the Carabao Cup. That's his first in the Premier League. And Emmanuel Dennis saves me a point at the death away against Frank Lampard's Everton. And my goodness, did I need that. It's been such a tough run of form for Forrest lately. 
as we give this guy a scholarship, Dave Bell, keep your eyes on this lad. We are to miss him at six foot five, 16 years old. Look at the beard on this Scottish teenager. That's all that iron brew. 62 rated, 16 years old, and no doubt about it, this guy is a centre-half. He's come out of the academy holding mid, but to me, whilst we've got an abundance of centre-halves, he, he should be a centre-half. He looks really, really good. So tall. He's going to get great strength in time, I'm sure, and solid defensive stats already. I'm, I'm excited about him. I really am. Dave Bell out of the academy with that beard. It's fantastic. The 16-year-old, another good player snapped up to our academy. So, final game of today's episode here, taking on Tottenham Hotspur at the City Ground. Of course, we beat Spurs for our first away day victory this season in North London. It was a famous scalp where we undeservedly won it by a goal to nil. Then, of course, in the last episode, we took him on away again and got battered 3-0 in the FA Cup fourth round. Now facing him at the city ground. Let's just say we poked the bear when we beat Spurs in that first fixture in North London because since then, every time we faced them, well, these two games, they have absolutely ran rampant. Yep, with a break at the city ground, we were free nil down. Young Min Son scored, Harry Kane scored too. We were three nil down at the break and there was some boos as we walked down the tunnel at half time. First time I've heard it at the city ground this season but whilst we got back in the game 12 minutes after the restart through Brennan Johnson combining with Rodri Brown the uh, young lads out of the academy linking up once again to get a goal back. Unfortunately once again our problems laid bare. We can score we can get goals but we cannot defend. 21 minutes after the restart so soon after we cut the deficit to 2. It was restored to 3. Hyung Min Son with another. Always scores a against me makes it 4-1 and every time Spurs came forward they looked like scoring it was like the Manchester derby on Sunday every time City came forward they looked like scoring every time Spurs came forward they looked like scoring and with two minutes to go Pierre-Emile Hoiberg makes it 5-1 and that would do it Boos at the final whistle. The city ground growing restless. Another poor performance. Another poor defeat. Whenever we lose, we lose heavily. No exception here. 5-1 the final score. Torn apart by Tottenham Hotspur. And as you'll see the league table in just a moment's time. After a very poor run of form. Only one win in 2023 thus far. Coming at St. James's Park. We continue to slide down the table. Our 12 games to go. While Spurs now open up a 6 point gap at the top. In the bottom half of the table. Forest slipped to 15th place. And are only 6 clear of Leicester and Fulham. Worst defensive record in the division. 12 games to go, only a six-point gap. We're looking nervously over our shoulders. But that will end today's episode of Korea Mode, guys. Big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next episode very soon.